Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast. We're now going to be moving on to the second game from last night, and that was the Cleveland Cavaliers and Boston Celtics, in which we saw the Celtics win 120 to 95. There really wasn't all too much doubt throughout this game. I know that the Cavaliers were sort of hanging around for the majority of the first three quarters. It was the Celtics leading in that 10 to 15 point range, but they couldn't fully pull away. We saw Donovan Mitchell with an absolutely incredible third quarter to really hang in there. But as we've seen from the Cavaliers for a lot of this playoff run, it is very much Donovan Mitchell or bust where Darius Garland wasn't really feeling himself again last night. He had the pretty rough game seven and it seems like it sort of spilled over a little bit into this series. He went 6 of 15 from the floor, 2 of 8 from 3. Now, I will say with Garland, there is absolutely room for him to get his opportunities because the Celtics really, you know, on anybody but Donovan Mitchell, they were very willing to play drop coverage and give a little bit of extra space to shooters. That's something that we saw a little bit as well in the first series against the Heat where it seemed like the Heat were getting these decent looks for some of their supplementary scorers, but they weren't able to capitalize necessarily. And that seems to be the philosophy a little bit of the Celtics of make the others hurt us. And up to this point, playing a couple flawed teams, you could say, between the Heat and now the Cavaliers, it is leading to a lot of success based off of the fact that their defense has been really impressive through these first six playoff games where the opponents have only topped 100 points once, and that was with the Miami Heat absolutely going absurd from the three-point line. And an example of how if some of these other players can knock down their shots, at least until the Celtics make adjustments, their defense can be at least, I wouldn't say exposed necessarily, but in an individual game, it can be taken advantage of, exploited. The Heat went 23 of 43 in that game and ended up scoring 111, which um, really isn't even that many points for the type of three-point shooting performance that they had. But Celtics are willing to you know, give off a little bit of space to some of these other teams. I think that Garland especially is going to have to be somebody that takes advantage of this. And, you know, last night just was not the case for them. And, you know, for the Cavs, I think that if you are going to be a believer in them, the other key aspect for them is when are we going to see Jarrett Allen back? Sounds like from the reporting that they were talking about during the broadcast, he's still struggling with sleeping. He has a rib injury. It's been called bruised. It's been called pierced is another way that I've heard uh, this injury be described. Rib injuries are absolutely tough. I know that I myself have been lucky enough not to deal with one, but it is a constant discomfort injury, and I can't imagine trying to play a game like this especially when you're Jared Allen and a lot of your game revolves out of physicality the type of toll that could take so I'm not sure necessarily what the timetable looks like I mean of course it was bad enough the fact that he missed you know the last three games of the series but to miss a game seven sounds like he's having a hard time even extending his arm up above his head on that side of his body so I don't feel great necessarily about the prospect of him returning. Hopefully we get some better news for him, but I just, I'm not really sure. And Evan Mobley, I have been very high on. It feels like last night his stat line was maybe a little bit inflated because of the fact that Celtics, it seemed like at one point, took their foot off the gas. It was Luke Cornett kind of. You know, he and Luke Cornett was fine last night for them. I would argue he was good for the first three quarters, but you know, playing a a reserve big, Mobley was able to sort of with desperation get off some extra buckets there. But I don't think that he was necessarily um, phenomenal in this game. And where the Celtics should be vulnerable right now as well is the fact that they don't have Kristaps Porzingis and they are missing their sort of extra tall, a little bit extra athletic big man. 
And they're starting Al Horford. I thought Al did a great job in the final few games of that Heat series. And he was solid again last night. But it feels like Allen could be somebody who could make things difficult for the Celtics in just a way that I don't know if Evan Mobley is in terms of Allen is definitely more of a lob threat. And Mobley is, we've seen him sort of ramp up his aggression levels in, you know, at times during the Magic series and again in the fourth quarter last night. But again, it just doesn't seem like he's necessarily fully there as the role man. And to be fair, he's been balancing the season playing alongside Jarrett Allen as well. So I'm sure that that hasn't been something that's been a huge focal point in practices for him throughout the course of the season but you know on the other end here I think that it is the Celtics series here to lose and pretty substantially I said Celtics and five coming into this series and I feel definitely better about that prediction coming out of this game where we we saw Jalen Brown was absolutely incredible in this game he scores 32 points for them helped Got get them off of the ground. He's a top 10 scorer in the league this season in terms of, you know, first quarter scoring. So he got himself going early, continued through the second quarter as well, helped them build up the lead. Derek White was incredible once again, 25 points and five assists. He shot seven of 12 from three. So he is just on such a three point shooting heater. And I mentioned these first two names before I mentioned Jason Tatum, which is absolutely a big part of the dialogue surrounding the Celtics as things currently stand with them because of the fact that Tatum has not been the elite scorer that we've seen at points throughout his career so far to begin the playoffs. Last night he scored 18 points. He was 7 of 19 from the field, but at times it felt like they were, you know, he was even a little bit worse. And for me, I feel like the three point shooting, just the lack of taking real shots just frustrates me so much. There was one point where he had Tristan Thompson switched on to him and he decided to shoot a, that sidestep step back three, as opposed to actually going at him, which just drives me nuts. And the next possession, he did go through Tristan Thompson bulldozed him over and ended up getting to the basket f for a, uh, a dunker layup there. And that's what he needs to do more of, but we've definitely seen him at times just settle for shots. And it's probably his biggest criticism is the fact that sometimes it just feels like he, the shot selection with him is subpar. And I think that has played a very big role into why he is averaging just 21 points in the playoffs so far on 41-25 shooting splits. Like, that is not good. That being said, I was on Twitter last night, and I was seeing, I, as a Celtics fan, am on a lot of, you know, Celtics Twitter. I'm in that area on social media, and everybody is just fully abandoning him and acting like it is over. It is insane to me. Like, when the Celtics start losing games and Tatum isn't stepping up, then I can understand a level of panic more. But the Celtics have been a dominant team all season, in large part because of the fact that whether you think that Tatum is a top 5, top 10, call it top 20, whatever you want, player in the NBA... He has taken a sacrifice in terms of putting up individual numbers in the idea of being able to help others participate more. This idea of sacrifice, if you listen to any type of interview from this Celtics team, they talk about sacrifice so much. And I think that Tatum has been one of the main contributors to this. And now he's coming out in these games. I believe he's passing well. He is their top rebounder. He played tremendous defense for them last night. Scoring isn't good right now for him. And again, when they start to lose games, I will be more concerned. But up until that point, they are cruising right now through these first six games. I think that they're going to be able to 
handle the Cavaliers fairly easily. And, you know, that's I know that a lot of people also are saying, well, it's a cupcake run and he hasn't been able to put up the numbers. They don't care about the numbers. Jason Tatum spent the, you know, first handful of his years putting up numbers and trying to, you know, show that he is a superstar. Nobody cared because they weren't winning and he was viewed as a choker. Now, I understand that his level of play offensively hasn't been great at, to start off these playoffs. And again, if you look at the numbers in the season as a whole, I don't care about that again because it was his most efficient year of his career from the field other than his rookie season when he was taking just 10 shots a game. But for Tatum, I just feel like it's kind of a no-win situation in the eyes of a lot of NBA fans. And for me, as a Celtics fan, I just want to see them continue to win. And I, Tatum has not been a negative for them, despite what people may tell you on the internet. There is that still clip that is sort of going viral a little bit of the entire Cavaliers defense. At this point, the Celtics are up by 20 points in the fourth quarter and every single one of the Cavaliers players have their eyes fixated on Tatum driving into the elbow. He ends up making the right pass to the corner for Peyton Pritchard who buries it. So ultimately, I just I don't have the same level of concern as other people with Jason Tatum. Now, when you have Anthony Edwards doing what he is on the other side of the bracket, it can be kind of hard to defend the idea of Tatum is a better player than Anthony Edwards, just be, trying to fight through the recency bias and make that argument. But at the same time, I don't think that he really cares. And I definitely don't care about the idea of who is the best player in the NBA, this future face of the league. The Celtics are trying to be the best team in the league. And they definitely appear that they could be. Now, Timberwolves would absolutely like to have a conversation in that regard. I know that the Nuggets are down 0-2 right now. I felt like going into the series, they were the best team in the NBA, and that hasn't necessarily looked great up to this point. But the Celtics are you know, one of those top-tier contenders, and ultimately, you can spend your time looking at the box scores and arguing about how good... Jason Tatum is or isn't we've heard it in the past with Jalen Brown as well who when he got his massive contract extension this past offseason a lot of people slandered him for that and now all of a sudden because Tatum isn't necessarily putting up the same points it's Jalen Brown's team and Jason Tatum is just a role player I just I think that this whole team is bought into the team nucleus and that's where just some of the discourse with NBA fandom just sort of drives me nuts. But let me know what you think on this series. I feel like it should be pretty easy for the Celtics moving forward like I meant like I highlighted earlier in the segment. There are a couple things that they could potentially take advantage of in terms of the Celtics defense but I just don't know how they're going to be able to stop the Celtics from putting up points where Isaac Okoro is supposed to be you know that perimeter defender to shut people down and Jalen Brown was just going right through him and I'm not really sure what the other reinforcements are now Max Struess actually had a pretty good game guarding Tatum but it was also, at, at least, you know, the conversation. I do agree with this. I felt like that was more on Tatum than it was the defense of Struess himself. But, you know, other than that, I just, again, I don't think that they're going to have the level of defense to be able to stop the Celtics. And I don't expect the Cavaliers to be able to consistently, in four games, win a shootout against the Celtics. But again, let me know what you think in the comments section. We are now going to be taking our second break of the show, and when we come back on the other side, I want to switch gears a little bit to the NFL. We have Joe Burrow returning to practice this week, so I want to dive into that and the outlook on the Bengals' upcoming season. So stick with us. We will be right back. 